Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Garth Reed, Student Ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica and Mathematics Teacher in Training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. Today, we'll be looking at definite integrals in the Cape Pure Mathematics Unit 1, Syllabus, Module 3, Calculus 1. All right. So here we have our question here to the left. It says that we are to evaluate the integral from one to two of t cubed plus four t squared over t to the power of six with respect to t. All right, so this is a definite integral. The reason why we know it is a definite integral is because it has the limits, right? The lower limit is one and the upper limit here is two. Okay, so let us get into the question. All right, so just to remind you about the power rule, it is here in the box, which says the integral from t to the power of n with respect to t is equal to t to the n plus one over n plus one plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant of integration, where n is a real number, but you can't put in negative one, right? n can be negative one. Now, when dealing with definite integrals, you should remember the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says that if you have a continuous function, right, which is defined on the interval, right, the interval, the closed interval a to b, then that is equal to the antiderivative or the integral of the function from a to b, which is equal to f of b minus f of a. Right, so I'm simply using capital F to represent the antiderivative or the integral of the function f of t, right? So we substitute the upper limit into the antiderivative minus, we substitute the lower limit into the antiderivative, all right? Let us now, let us now look at it. Yes, so let's look at it now. So what I'm gonna do first is to find the indefinite integral, all right? The indefinite integral is the one that doesn't have the limits. In other words, I'm finding the antiderivative of that fraction inside the brackets, right? That, that's the function which we call the integrand, okay? So let us start. So this is equal to, now what I'm gonna do is to separate the expression in the brackets, right? I'm gonna rewrite it as separate fractions. So this is gonna be the integral of t to the power of three, all right? And I'm gonna divide that by t to the power of six plus four t squared, And I'm going to 40 squared, and I'm going to divide that by t to the power of 6. All right? And that is with respect to t. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is to simplify using the laws of indices. All right? So let me just write it here in case you don't remember. So recall, if you have t to the m divided by t to the power of n, then that is equal to t to the power of m minus n, right? You will subtract the powers. So this is now equal to the integral of t to the power of three minus six plus Four t to the power of two minus six. All right, we subtract the powers, and that is with respect to t. Okay, let us simplify further. So we know that three minus six is negative three plus four t to the power of two minus six, which we know is a negative four. 
and that is with, with respect to T. All right, let me scroll down. So we have more space, right? So at this stage, we can now use the power rule, right, on each term in the brackets. So we add one to the power and divide by that new power. So what we'll have, if we integrate t to the power of minus three, we'll get t to the minus three plus one, all right? And I'm going to divide that by the same power, which is negative three plus one. Plus, when I integrate 4t to the minus four, I add one to the power and divide by that new power. So we're going to have 4t to the power of minus four plus one. And I'm going to divide that by the same power, which is negative four plus one. All right. And remember now we have to put our arbitrary constant of integration. And that is when we're dealing with the indefinite integral, the one without the limits. All right. So let me simplify. So what is negative three plus one? You should know that negative three plus one is the same as negative two, right? So we have, so what we really have is t to the negative two over negative two. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the, the negative on the outside, right? So what we'll have is t to the minus two over two, and I'm gonna put the negative here, all right? Now, in the other term, we have 4t to the power of minus four plus one over minus four plus one. Now minus four plus one is negative three, right? But I'm gonna put a negative here. So what we'll have is 4t to the power of minus three, and I'm gonna divide that by three, plus the arbitrary constant of integration c, good. Now I'm going to re rewrite this. This is the answer for the definite integral, but it can be rewritten as negative one over negative one over two t squared minus. All right, we're going to have four in the numerator, and then we're going to have three t to the power of three in the denominator plus c, all right? So um, that is what I'm gonna do, all right? So in case you, you didn't catch that, let me just write it to the side here, all right? So recall, I'm gonna put it in blue for you. Recall, right, that t to the minus n is the same as one over t to the power of n. That is the reason why I could write t to the minus two as one over t squared and t to the minus three as one over t cubed, all right? So that is our answer for the definite integral. The next step now is to find the indefinite integral, which is, which is what they ask us to find the question, right? So let me do it here. So we want the integral, from one to two, all right, from one to two of t cubed plus four t squared. And I'm dividing that expression. And I'm going to divide that expression here by t to the power of six with respect to t. So we had already calculated the antiderivative of t cubed plus four t squared over t to the power of six, right? Which is right here. So what we will have now is one over t squared multiplied by two minus four over, all right, that's over three t cubed. Now when you're doing definite integrals, you don't have to put the plus c, all right? So that's it. 
and we're evaluating this from one to two, right? From t is equal to one, t is equal to two, All right? So let me just write that. From t is equal to one, t is equal to two, All right? So this is now equal to negative one, and we're gonna divide that by two times two squared, right? We're substituting the upper limit, which is t is equal to two. So remember from the fundamental theorem of calculus, it's the upper limit minus the lower limit, right? So that's that minus four, and we're gonna divide that by three times t cubed minus, we're now going to substitute the lower limit, right? That's when t is equal to one. So that's negative one divided by, that's negative one divided by two times one squared minus four divided by three multiplied by one cubed. All right, so that is that. So now we just need to do some working out here. All right, we just need to simplify and see if we get an answer. So this is negative one over two times two squared. If we should put that in a calculator, you will get a negative one divided by eight. All right. And a negative four over three times t cubed, to put that in the calculator, you will get a negative one over six. All right, I will encourage you to use a calculator if you cannot do it mentally. All right, so this is minus, we're working with the second bracket now. So negative one over two times one squared, that's the same as negative one divided by two. All right, and negative four over three times one cube, that's the same as negative four divided by three. All right, great. So now what we need to do is just distribute the negative sign inside the brackets, right? The negative sign will affect each term inside the bracket. So what you will now have is negative one divided by eight, minus one divided by six and the negative sign now affects each term so that's positive one divided by two all right and negative times negative is another positive four divided by three all right so if you put this in the calculator, negative one over eight minus one over six plus a half plus four over three, you will get a 37 divided by 24. All right, so that is your answer to the definite integral which is the integral from one to two of t cubed plus four t squared divided by a t to the power of six with respect to t. All right, so that is our answer to the question. So, the first step that you should do is to find the definite integral. That is the one without the limits. So you find the antiderivative of the function. And then once you get that, you substitute the upper limit minus the lower limit. All right. So this is definite integrals in the Cape Pure Mathematics Unit 1 syllabus of Module 3, Calculus 1. I'm Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica and a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. 
and thank you for joining.